Anyone have a suggestion? <laughs> Breaking girl code. What was that? Breaking girl code. Breaking girl code. Okay, but I have a follow-up question for you. <laughs> what is what does girl code mean to you? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm I'm kind of what what I like to call a guy's girl. No one has ever called me that, but it's kind of a title. <laughs> Guys don't really want to hang out with me, but I try very hard. <laughs> and so I'm one of those girls who's like, I don't even know what girl code is. It's like, just don't be messy and we're cool. <laughs> Girls are just too much drama. No, girl code, yeah, it is interesting. There's a lot of weird rules with girl code. Um, can someone suggest like one of the girl code rules that you can think of? My brain literally is broken. No, it's not actually, ex. what? Don't date your friend's ex. Don't date your friend's ex. Yeah, but there's, there, that's the thing. Everything nowadays is so, like, black and white. You know what I mean? Like, you just saw the two comics on stage before me. <laughs> <laughs> but everything is, like, so black or white. There's, like, there's not a lot of room for nuance anymore. And I think something like that, like, dating an ex, there's, like, what's the timeline, you know? Because I feel like it's fine. I heard about someone recently. They were, they're dating... Their friend's ex or something like that. I, yeah, they're, like, dating their friend's ex, but they're, like, in this long-term happy relationship, but the person, like, won't let it go. And that seems crazy to me. Like, it, you, ha that person had to be... I feel like this isn't going to be funny at all. It's just going to be me giving very serious <laughs> advice. I start getting, like, very passionate about things, and I'm like, we don't need jokes. We need the truth. <laughs> I think it really is a case-by-case -case basis. Like, obviously, like, if you break up with someone, don't bone them right after. But maybe, like, I guess it depends. Like, how good is this friend? How good is this other person's dick? Like, I don't know. There's just so, there's so many variables to that. Because I'd rather get a diamond ring than a long-term friendship. I'll be honest with you. Because even if the marriage doesn't work out, like, I'll just pawn the ring. <laughs> Am I doing this right? I wasn't really paying attention <laughs> at the beginning of the show. Okay, another... W I want to think... A tsunami. Oh, tsunami. <laughs> Any particular tsunami stand out to you? <laughs> Anyone in Okay, here's a, this is really embarrassing. The tsunami is the one where the waves go back really far, and then all of a sudden, it's just all of the ocean is on land. <laughs> is that correct? That's what a tsunami is. Is there rain involved with that, or it's just the water? It's just the water. I mean, rain is water. There's well, yeah, rain is so. Uh, water bottles is water, sure, but that's not. I wouldn't say. Oh, could I have a bottle of tsunami, please? <laughs> There's different kinds of water. I'm not that... I know I'm selling it like I'm pretty dumb. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> I grew up in Southern California. Like, I experienced earthquakes and fires and divorce. And those are the three seasons I know about. I do love watching videos of tsunamis because there's always the one dumb person who's like, look at the waves! They shouldn't be that far... <laughs> And it's funny, because you as the viewer of that video, you go, how could someone be that stupid? How could someone be that stupid? They're just standing there. How could they be that stupid? But you better believe if I was at the side of a tsunami, I'd be like, look at the waves. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't really have much more about tsunamis. Okay, what's a cyclone? I really just want to learn while I'm here. I dropped out of college, so. Does anyone know what a cyclone is? Is that a water tsunami? I know, that's what I was thinking of. She moved my body like a cyclone. That reminds me of middle school dances. Man, that was the horniest time in my life. The horniest time in your life is before you ever have sex. Because it's so exciting, the thought of it. You think it's going to be so much more special. Like pinkies touching in middle school? That is erotic. <laughs> like just the slowest move over to the pinky? I've never climaxed like that in my life. That's what a tsunami feels like.
Okay, any other suggestions? Girls with septum piercings. Girls with septum piercings, okay. Yeah. Okay, now that I can talk about. <laughs> As a former girl with a septum piercing, it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. If you ever see a girl with a septum piercing, you just have to ask, um, what is going on with her sexually? You know, because... As from my own personal experience, it's a it's a fine line. You start off with one, you know, small little piercing, and then you're like, how can I let people know I will eat their pussy, but I'm not sure if I'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's like wearing a pride shirt outside of Pride Month. It's like okay, we see you, we hear you. <laughs> Having a septum piercing is also like she's figuring it out. She's figuring it out. <laughs> I didn't start with the septum piercing. What happened was I got my nose, I had this friend, Lindsay, and I thought she was so cool. We could go over and party there all the time. And so she was really cool. She got her nose pierced at like maybe 13 years old. And I was like, I wanna be Lindsay, you know? <laughs> so finally I asked my dad, I think I was 16, and my dad let me get a nose piercing. And I remember after I got it, I went to the movies with him that night and the lady at the counter was taking our ticket. And I was so excited, because it feels like this huge change, like everyone's gonna notice. And I looked at my dad after I was like, do you think that she saw my nose piercing? The ticket lady at the movies? I don't know, it was so insane. And then I wasn't getting enough attention from that, so then I got a second nose piercing right below it. So I had two in one nose. And then I got another nose piercing in my other nose. And then I got my septum piercing. And then I realized I can't pick my nose anymore. <laughs> and that is one of the few simple joys that I have in my life. I love picking my nose. <laughs> and then I did go down on a few of my girlfriends. And <laughs> I said, I got to take this out. I keep getting in this situation. <laughs> so I got it removed. Um, I did also have a uh, one single nipple piercing. You know, cold feet, cold feet, just dipping my toe in. I said, let's get the left one. If we like it, we'll move on to the right. But then guys are, so, did you say same? Do, yeah. do you have them currently pierced? I, know, I, I had one. And I Was yours getting infected and goopy? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mine was, and honestly, like when I would hook up with guys with my single nipple piercing, they'd always make a con. Oh, you you only have one? Yeah, just either fuck me or don't. Okay. <laughs> Enough with the commentary. One time I had a guy come to my place, and he was like, "Oh, your your bedroom is bare." I'm like, "Get the fuck out, then. You don't have to be here." <laughs> But there was something interesting. Like, I, I don't think guys, like, um, I don't know how else to say this, suck on titties that often. <laughs> but I noticed that when I had a nipple piercing, they're like, I have to now. And I wouldn't tell them that it was infected. That <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> All righty, that's it, Jeremiah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it going for my pal, Ali McCoskey.